Okay, so let's take you back now to when you were growing up in Zimbabwe on a farm with your family, yeah. but life changed dramatically for you when you were forcefully removed from your home when Mugabe's supporters started to raid your farm. Yeah. Can you tell us your sort of memories and recollections of, of that horrific time? Yeah, listen, it was a it was a tough, tough time for me and my family. Obviously, I was I was still young. Um but yeah, when your dad walks into the house and you know, you're hearing sort of gunshots in the background and he sort of says, come into the living room, guys, and then tells you to go and pack a small bag um, that we're going to go away for a while. You know, you, you know, it's not good. So, um, yeah, I just did what my dad said, um, probably for the first time and um, went into my room and packed a small bag, got my cricket bat. I remember getting my cricket bat, um, yeah, getting into the living room and then dad saying quietly, guys, now into the car. All the lights were turned off of the car. You could hear gunshots on the farm. Um, got into the car with, yeah, with uh, with dad and the siblings, and looked out the back window. And yeah, we we drove off our farm slowly, quietly off the back roads. And yeah, I remember my house just in the distance, and I yeah, never saw home again. Um, so yeah, it was pretty tough. And you know, we're lucky, but. You know, my dad did everything to to protect us, to protect the family. You know, when you're sort of given, you know, the choice of, you know, we're going to destroy your house and your family and, you know, we'll work from your sister up or get off the farm in 12 hours. Um, you know, I don't think there's much, you know, you got to you got to move quickly. And I, I think my dad was, parents were awesome. And that's why I've got such huge respect for them. I think, you know, when, when you've given, when you've, you give everything to your family after something so tough like that and sort of the way they were so positive in life and gave us kids, you know, everything. I think they're massive role models to me. And you know, every time I, I play for, for Italy or for do anything in life, I just want to make them proud. So I sort of carry that with me. And um, yeah, but listen, I think everyone has their own tough time in life. I think everyone has a, has a difficult time in their life. That's mine. Um, but it's sort of how you bounce back and how you stay positive through through that. And I was lucky that it sort of brought my family even closer together. And I'm extremely lucky and, and grateful for that. How old were you? I think I was six eh, at the time. Yeah. So you know, you know, you know, you know what's going, you know what's going on. Like you're not stupid. Um, obviously, I've got two older brothers, so they know even more than me, and they just kept me calm. Um, younger sister, so. It's not like you're just putting one kid in the car. You you know, there was four of us. Um, and, you know, we had a huge operation, you know, three farms, um, horses, you know, tobacco, tobacco, maize, cattle. You know, my dad employed over a thousand people. You lose that in tw 12 hours. Then, ah. you know, it's, ah. you know, very, very difficult. So, yeah, listen, it was really tough. And then, you know, I remember going into the city center. We had a house where, my grandfather was my nonno, so my dad's dad, who was an Italian, and um, he had a house there, and we stayed there for for six months to a year, and and then after that, you know, the country was going getting worse and worse, and mum and dad decided to take us down to South Africa, mainly for mainly for schooling and to get us into good schools and to give us the best opportunity at life, and yeah, extremely lucky that we got into good schools, and um, yeah, it was it was awesome, so. Um, yeah, it was difficult. And, you know, I think my mum went back a few days to try and get things off the farm. She was held hostage, um, which was also really hectic. Um, the Italian embassy had to get involved and that was tough. And then cut three, four years later, you know, my uncle and aunt were, so my mum's my brother was still on their farm in Zim and, you know, they got almost beaten to death. You know, they broke my, my aunt's arms, cheekbone, cut my uncle's ear. Um, so... I think we were lucky at times, you know, a lot of people lost their lives and it was, well, you know, a lot worse than us. Um, but yeah, extremely difficult, difficult time, but, you know, lots to be thankful for. And that, and that's why, you know, during that time, my Italian family was, was there for us, helped us loads financially and, you know, we're, we're there for us. So every time I play for Italy, I'm not only representing mum and dad and my family, um, but I'm representing the Italian side too and extremely proud of that. You got a scholarship to go to Hilton College when you moved to South Africa. Yeah. Was there was there a drive from what had happened to you and being taken out of your home to make sure that you you grabbed this new opportunity? 
Yeah. Um, obviously, when you get given a scholarship and people believe in you, um, then you feel like, you know, you've got that belief and support to maybe go on to further things. I wouldn't say it was fully on rugby because, you know, I thought cricket was maybe going to be my first option. I really wanted to be maybe go pro in cricket. Um, and then, yeah, I think at Hilton, you know, it's so big on rugby and things that, you know, my passion grew there. And then obviously I got an opportunity after school to go to Western province and then Italy came calling. And once I got a little taste of playing Italy 20s and then, you know, getting into that, uh, that's where I fully, you know, dove into to trying to play for Italy. And that was a dream of mine. Mate, how nice is Hilton College, by the way? Yeah, oh, mate, we're so lucky. Uh, we're so so lucky. I was so so lucky. Uh, incredible, incredible. Mate, that game park. You guys have got a. You guys yeah. have got a little safari park without the big cats. Such yeah. a rough zebra what? down there. I was like, what is what? going on? Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 that place. No, bro, that no, place no. has got some safari park. G. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a safari park on on campus. The uh, golf, you know, the driving gym. range. Putt putt. Think three gyms, rowing gym. Crazy. Um. Yeah, it's mad. Well, I was Every very, we very, very, very spoiled. Very, yeah, very South spoiled. African super soldiers just walking out the gym is nutty, and also the, <laughs> the outdoor pools delightful. I was yeah. off that diving board left, right, and rhubarb. No, I it was awesome. down there. Yeah, couldn't trust us at school with a real javelin, let alone a tiger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think they've got. I think they've. Got, have you guys got leopards in there? You do have leopards. Yeah, there was. Actually, yeah, yeah, there's leopards. Genuine, there was one spotted. I think two or three weeks ago, a leopard spotted on Hilton campus. And the thing is, the Hilton, Hilton think it's a good idea to take, you know, the whole class down there, hundred <laughs> pupils, and say, you know, yeah. sleep outside. Lose the twelve year old. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're missing one. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> one yeah, of the first beers got off by the leopard. That's uh, that is yeah, mental. I was very. I was very, very lucky. It was yeah. yeah, special, special school. After Hilton, you then moved to Hartbury College in England, who themselves apparently have a, a sort of a pretty funky initiation. Take us through that. Yeah. Um, first of all, you just come in your boxes. Then you have to go into like a chicken shop or whatever, whatever it is. You have to change boxes with your teammates there's like 20 30 guys in the in the chicken shop and the guys are like get out get out and like all of us are putting on each other's pants and then elephant walk through through the center of gloucester and yeah drinking dirty pints um getting walloped by eggs um yeah i know it's it's pretty pretty hectic i think maybe some cat food. elephant walk yeah, elephant walk is oh, i can't really should I try and show you yeah try and show right. me yeah it's like when you, I don't know, like tank, you have to hold your the other bloke through your your legs and like sort of walk like that. Well, I don't know so you, hold it. on, you hold on to the bloke in front of his penis or arm? No, his arm, which is oh. basically his, <laughs> which is basically his penis. Yeah. Right. Um, and then yeah, you march through the center and you're getting walloped by eggs and but it's a good crack. It brings everyone together. It's good. <sighs> Right, there you are. Another challenge accepted by me and Matt. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Nothing quite it? like, yeah, a good bit of humiliation <laughs> to get everyone together. I love it. That's Max's punishment for uh, for missing the pod last week. He's got to... It wouldn't be the first. It won't be the last. <laughs> <laughs> so while still at college, uh, in 2016, you're called up to the Italian squad. You make your debut yeah. in, in um, San Jose against the USA. What's your best memory of that? Um, yeah, I just... Uh... I think it was special that I was with Italy A before I got called up. And I was actually just with my dad. We were out having a day off. We just played against Argentina A. Um, and I was sitting with my dad when I got the call. So I think that was pretty special to obviously whatever all, everything that had happened with the family, with my whole journey. And then for my dad to be there with me when I got my first call was was awesome. Um, and then I just remember being so jet lagged because I had to fly from Bucharest to London, then London to San Francisco, and then joint. And I thought I was just going to go there and hold tackle bags. And Connor's called me in straight away and said, "Seb, listen, we're struggling with injuries. You're gonna, you're gonna be, you're gonna make your debut. You're gonna be on the bench." So he was like, "Get used to the lineouts and and get all the calls and stuff." So I was nervous, but you know, thankfully it all went okay. And I was still a youngster. Obviously, I was still at uni, um, and it was pretty good. I remember just winning. 
against the states and then winning again against Canada and just getting a good win bonus and then taking that money after the tour, going back to Hartbury as a student and going, shit, I've got quite a bit of money here, and <laughs> saying to my dad, Dad, what should I do? <laughs> what should I do with it? And Dad's just like, you deserve it, enjoy. So for the next year and a half, I was just buying boo booths for everyone, VIP <laughs> bottles. <laughs> I was just acting like such a such a chop. <laughs> You went That's full Van Wilder. Van Wilder. Van Wilder. I was just like, it's on me, it's on me, lad. So, yeah, I was a bit, I was just a bit of a chop, but no, it was awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it was good, good memories. And obviously, you know, I didn't, I never thought that I was going to get called up again, especially in the in the near future. Um, so, yeah, I was mainly just focused on Hartbury getting the degree, and then after that, I signed with Benetton, and then. Yeah, obviously Connor was monitoring me and called me back in, so it was awesome. When you went in, I'm guessing you didn't speak very much Italian. So I what... still, I still, I still don't. <laughs> yeah, I know, but what happens <laughs> when you get roped in and you've got people calling lineouts in Italian? Yeah, it, it does that? get it does get tricky. It does get tricky. Um, obviously now I'm, I understand basically 100, percent and my Italian's not the worst. I wouldn't say it's great, but it's not bad. Um. But yeah, I know it's tough, especially when it comes to line outs. And I remember playing with Sergio as well. And if you missed detail or, you know, you'd get into you. So it was also stressful. Um, but now we've got Kieran as our head coach and he hardly speaks anything. So it's awesome. So it's perfect. Did you also yeah. have to learn how to smoke 20 fags a night when you were with Sergio Porto? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, loads of, it's, in the, it's in the culture. It's in the culture. <laughs> It's awesome. I think it's class. And it's, cheap, <laughs> and it's cheaper than the UK. Okay, I'll never forget I, when I went to one of those aftermatch functions and it, that was like yeah. a big White House up on the hill. Yeah, 90%. I'm sure, we, I'm sure we had a cigarette together after the Oh uh, No, I wasn't smoking. I, wasn't smoking. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember going out and big Jim was there and there's, uh, there's Sergio out with a mold for red. I'm like, hold on, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> No, it's it's in the culture, but it's good. Yeah. 